Hey, what's up guys? This is Tariq here from smartbytrainers.com. Uh, your smart trainer can measure the power produced by you at any given moment, and you'll see that number displayed on whatever device or application paired with your smart trainer. Uh, but there's a lot more to that number than what you see on the screen or your average power. So today, uh, wanna go beyond just looking at your instant power and average power. And if you are new to training with power by the end of this video, Hopefully you will leave with a much clearer picture uh, and understanding of, of uh, power and what all these numbers mean. All right, so the metrics we're gonna talk about in this video are instant power, FTP, watts per kilogram, average power, normalized power, training stress score, intensity factor, and power distribution. There are plenty of other power metrics, uh, but these are the main ones that are commonly used. I understand this video might be longer than usual, so I broke it down into chunks and I marked all these sections below in the description. Uh, so just click on the timestamp next to each section and if, if you want to fast forward to a specific uh, section. Also, a little disclaimer, I'm not a coach, nor do I claim to be a coach, but I've been training and racing with power for many, many years. And this video isn't going to be about how to train with power, that's your coaching job. Uh, rather that I will talk about what these metrics mean and how uh, they are generally used. Finally, if you learn a thing or two in this video or find it helpful in any way, I would appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's dig into it. When you first start training with power, you'll notice your power is constantly changing. This is totally normal and how it should look like. Uh, this is because a power meter is measuring the force you are outputting at many different points uh, in your pedal stroke uh, and reporting this number to your head unit uh, or cycling app. You can smooth this number out by a little bit. In Zwift, for example, you can select a three second average. Uh, bike computers offer the same type of smoothing and some offer additional options such as 10 seconds uh, averaging or more. Uh, also, different trainers have a different level of fluctuation depending on how they measure power and the size of the flywheel. Uh, some smart trainers offer erg mode power smoothing. The Kicker, for example, has that enabled by default in their app. I personally do not like that feature and I will tell you why you should disable it. When erg mode power smoothing is enabled, usually the trainer will broadcast your target power instead of your actual power or it smoothes uh, your power way too much. Uh, what you are seeing isn't uh, how power meters work and it's kind of fake. It looks pretty, but it is fake. All in all, I wouldn't worry about this uh, fluctuation and no matter how much you try, you won't be able to smooth it out uh, unless you happen to be a robo cyclist. Functional threshold power, uh, also known as FTP. Uh, your FTP is the most commonly used term when training with power. You've probably heard a lot about this number already. And probably some people already asked you, hey, what's your FTP? Uh, FTP is the maximum amount of power you can sustain for an hour. And one of the first thing you need to do when you get your smart trainer is determining your FTP value. That value is important so you can set your training zones and everything else will make a lot more sense once that value is known. There are many ways you can determine your FTP, all of which provide a similar estimate. Uh, if you have been riding with a power meter for a while, you can try to estimate your FTP by crunching all this data into some software such as WK4 uh, from Training Peaks, for example, and let it estimate it for you. Uh, Exert uh, is another company that takes a different approach to estimating your FTP by analyzing your regular activity data and performing a P analysis to estimate your threshold power and define your uh, power profile or you can just perform an FTP test. Uh, this is the common method used to estimate your threshold power. Uh, FTP tests come in so many different ways, but they essentially all do the same thing. Uh, the 20 minute FTP test is the most commonly used test to determine your FTP value. Uh, if you use Zwift, you can find the 20 minute FTP test in their workout library and Zwift will guide you through the test with a step-by-step -step instructions. Trainer Road also has a variety of FTP tests they have the 20 minute test, the two by eight minute test, and many others, but their latest RAM test is the one they now use in all their training plans. The Sufferfest has your own 4DP power profile that you can use as well. Erg mode should be turned off when performing any type of FTP test except the RAM test or instructed otherwise. 
uh, if you use Zwift or Terrain Road, they will automatically disable erg mode for you and you will have to change gear to adjust resistance during the test. Uh, this is done because this test is meant to test your current fitness, not to see if you can reach some target watt you think you can achieve or hypothetical FTP you have in your head. And now if you decide to use the ramp test in train road, erg mode will be enabled by default assuming your trainer supports uh, erg mode. Okay, a few tips for your, uh, for your FTP test just from my own experience. In any given season, do the same FTP test and follow the same method to get the most accurate and consistent results. For example, if you decide to go with a 20 minute FTP test, then do that same 20 minute FTP test uh, for the rest of this, the season. If you decide to do the train road ramp test, then that's what you wanna do for, for the rest of the season. Also, do the same warm up every time. Uh, if you do a 30 minute warm up at 150 watts, do that same warm up every time. Allow time for uh, for recovery prior to performing an FTP test. Uh, you want to be somewhat rested before this test. Usually best to do the test after uh, a recovery week. Uh, make sure your smart bike trainer or power meter is calibrated correctly. Most power meters can be calibrated using your head unit or Garmin watch. Some trainers can be calibrated in Zwift or using the trainer's own app. Make sure you warm up the trainer for about uh, 10 minutes before you calibrate it. Pace yourself. Do not kill yourself in the first five minutes of a 20 minute FTP test. We've all made this mistake and you're gonna be miserable. And be ready to push yourself to the limit. This is a test, so it should be hard and you should push yourself. Uh, and there's another way in Zwift to set your FTP. Uh, if you do not know your FTP value, just put a low number like 100 watts or something like that and go and ride very hard or do a race that will last at least 30 minutes or so. Zwift usually analyze your critical power from each ride and if it detects a new FTP value, you'll get a notification and you can update it. Okay, uh, watts per kilograms. Uh, you've seen it if you've been on Zwift or even possibly got in some argument over this metric uh, if you've done a virtual race on Zwift. Uh, watts per kilogram is the amount of power you are outputting at any given moment divided by your weights in kilogram. Very simple calculation. Uh, this metric determines the speed of riders assuming all elements are the same. And this number is also one of the metrics used in Zwift algorithm to determine your speed. Uh, and you'll see it next to the rider's uh, name in the Zwift nearby menu on the right side of your screen. Uh, for this number to be accurate, your weight has to be set correctly. So make sure you input your own weight correctly in your profile and just be honest about it. I know it can be tempting, just don't do it. Don't be a weight cheater. However, it isn't always that simple. Watts per kilogram might give an indication of how strong a rider is, but doesn't always determine who is going to be the faster rider. Uh, so when climbing, your watts per kilogram will always play a big role in how fast you climb and the rider with the higher watts per kilogram will almost always win. However, on the flats or descents, the absolute power and aerodynamic drag play a bigger role on your speed than your watts per kilogram. Uh, so for example, on a flat course, the rider with the lower watts per kilogram but less aerodynamic drag might be the faster than a rider with the higher watts per kilogram. So just because your watts per kilogram is higher than someone else, that doesn't necessarily mean you are going to be that person. Average power is your average power and is commonly displayed in most cycling apps toward the end of each ride. Uh, your average power is a similar metric to other averages you've seen, such as your average speed or average heart rate. And because your power is constantly changing, it's best to use the average power when doing intervals. Uh, average power is useful when doing a steady and shorter intervals, usually 20 minutes or less. And Zwift and most other training applications don't display average uh, power as a metric while riding. Uh, it's usually only displayed towards the end of the ride. I wish they display the average uh, during a ride for or for each interval. Uh, but this is why I always have a bike computer in front of me uh, while working out, just because I like to see a lot of other metrics while uh, I'm riding. And average power is great to monitor when doing intervals, but it doesn't give an accurate picture of how easy or hard the ride was. The metrics we're gonna talk about next will do that.
Normalized power uses a complicated algorithm to calculate the true effort that went into a ride. Joe Frail described it best in his book, The Power Meter Handbook, uh, as an expression of average power adjusted for the range of variability during a ride and therefore more closely reflects the effort or metabolic cost of a ride uh, than the, does uh, average power. To try to explain this, let's take a look at a ride I did. Uh, the graph you see here uh, was from a workout that had a 3 sets of 5 by 90 second interval at 125% FTP followed by 30 minute at 65% FTP. The average power for the full ride was 175 watts and normalized was 223 watts. If I only look at the average power for a 90 minute ride, this would be considered an easy endurance ride for me. However, when looking at the MP value of 223 watts, I can immediately tell this ride was not easy. Uh, let's take a look at the hard section only and eliminate the warm up and cool down. The section you see now uh, was for 45 minutes long and the average power was 209 watts. An MP of 259, for me averaging 260 watts for 45 minutes is pretty hard. But I've done 209 watts for over five hours in training rides without a problem. Now, uh, here's a tip for you if you're a triathlete. If you want to have a good run in a triathlon race, especially in an Ironman or a half Ironman, you want to keep your eyes on the average power and keep it as close to the MP value as possible. And we're talking about only a few watts. Uh, this indicates a steady effort, meaning less matches burned, resulting in a good run. And that metric is called variability index, but we're not gonna get to it here. But you can view that metrics in Training Peaks. And because normalized power was developed and trademarked by uh, Peaksware, the parent company of uh, Training Peaks, uh, you can find it in Training Peaks and some other companies such as uh, Trainer Road. You can also find it in Strava, but it's called weighted average and uses slightly different calculation. And as of doing this video, Zwift doesn't display normalized power anywhere that I know of. Uh, you can also display normalized power on bike computers such as the Wahoo Element Bolt or, or Garmin Edge. The intensity factor is simply the ratio of normalized power to your threshold power, MP over FTP. This number is a good indicator of the intensity of the ride. For example, if your FTP is 250 watts and your MP for a two hour was 200 watts, then your, F, your IF would be 200 over 250 equal 80%. Uh, I like to use this metric, not just to see how I did in a specific ride or a race, but also to know the intensity of a workout before even doing it. For example, uh, a workout with an IF of less than 0.75 should be an easy ride. Between 0.75 and 85 is considered an endurance ride. The higher the IF value, the more intense the workout is. Train Road displays the IF and TSS value next to each workout in their workout library. However, Zwift does not. They only display the TSS value. Another good application for IF is to see if you are within target power in a race. For example, if you are racing an Ironman, generally you want to keep your IF under 0.75. For a one hour TT event, you might want to target an IF value of one or more if you can. The training stress score or TSS is a score indicating the intensity or and stress a certain workout produce. It takes into account the intensity and duration of a single workout. Uh, TSS is best viewed as a predictor of the amount of glycogen utilized in each workout as Dr. Coggan described it in his book, Training and Racing with a Power Meter. The TSS value is also another good predictor of uh, the intensity of a workout. So you can look at the TSS value and make a decision if this is a good workout for uh, the day. Uh, the formula to produce a TSS score was developed by Dr. Andrew Coggan and looks something uh, like this. Fortunately, you don't have to plug in any of these numbers in, uh, to calculate your TSS. It's usually calculated automatically for, uh, for you in Training Peaks, Training Road, Zwift, Strava, and uh, any bike computer. Also, the cumulative daily and weekly TSS can be used to calculate your fitness and freshness. And it's a good indicator of how much training uh, or volume an athlete can take that could lead to improvement in his or her fitness a race before a race or before hitting the or training area. In Zwift, TSS is displayed for each workout in the workout library and is also displayed in the final workout summary screen. Uh, you can also view a version of TSS in Strava, but it is called training load. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, uh, Strava, uh, when updating the FTP value, 
you shouldn't go back and update all my previous training load and IF values. That's not how uh, FTP work. So I just thought I mentioned that here. The power distribution chart is one of my favorite charts to look at after a workout or a race. That chart looks simple but packed with information. Uh, it gives you uh, an idea of how your time was spent in the saddle. For example, the, the chart you see here uh, shows that I spent 59 minutes between 225 watts range in this specific workout. Uh, I was supposed to do 4 by 20 minutes between 220, 200 and 225, so the time was well spent in that zone. You can also view this chart in the Zwift companion app under uh, your activity. Uh, power distribution is also good when analyzing data from a race to see where uh, you spend most of your power. Okay, this video was meant to introduce and explain to you all the main metrics used when training with power and try to explain that there is much more to training with power than the power number that you see on the screen or average power you see displayed after every ride. With smart trainers and power mirrors, athletes from all levels now have some really good tools to train and unlock speed and fitness like never before. Uh, you just need to understand how to interpret all this data. A good coach uh, can uh, guide you through all of this and help you reach your uh, potential. Uh, also, with power uh, from a smart trainer or power meter, indoor training uh, gains new meaning and more focus since now you have a target to shoot for. But Here's my advice if you don't have a coach or someone to guide you through proper training with power. Zwift, Trainer Road, and other cycling apps have plans to get you started. Uh, Trainer Road is my favorite and has a really large library of plans for different disciplines from road racing, crits, sprint, triathlon, all the way to a full Ironman. Uh, follow one of these plans and you will learn so much about power just by doing them and you will get a better understanding of how power zones work, TSS, intensity factor, etc. Uh, the two books I've mentioned in this video are also great uh, to read if you want to geek out and learn more about power and, and how to use it in training. I'll have a link to them in the description below so uh, make sure you check them out. Okay, this is all I have today. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.